Hello, welcome to today's Lightboard Tech Talk. We're going to be talking about content switching. What is content switching? Content switching is when the load balancer manages connections from a client to a single virtual service or virtual IP address, VIP, to different pools of servers based on the actual content that the client is requesting or sending. And there are two main use cases that I want to talk about today. The first one is e-commerce, where some sort of persistence. I need to maintain persistence to a server because, for example, in e-commerce, I'm online shopping and I'm looking at all these products. I'm putting things in my shopping cart. And this shopping cart, chances are, are only stored on that one local server that I'm connected to. So if the load balancer were to switch me to a different server for some reason, I'm going to lose my shopping cart and this can be really bad. How do we manage that? We manage that by tracking cookies. And there are cookies that we look at when we do this. So cookie persistence. where we look at the cookie coming from the client based on that connection. And these cookies have fairly standard names and they can be unique if you want it to be, it depends on the application server and the application. But often there'll be something like session ID or J session. And these cookies will have a value. These are what we call AV pairs. And these cookies will have a value, AV standing for attribute value. So these cookies will have a value that is specific to that session at that point in time. So as a unique value for that client making that connection. So when the client makes a connection and will get a cookie, and now it's going to send the cookie periodically when it sends the requests, the load balancer can look at that session ID and look at the value and match that value based on the existing sessions and make sure it send the connection to the same server that it had sent connections in the past for that client for that specific value. This is extremely handy, obviously, and there are multiple use cases where we use cookie persistence, not just for e-commerce, but for a lot of applications where we have instances where we have local databases stored on servers, and we need to maintain that persistence for that session. The second use case that we use content switching is for managing data to specific components. And we leverage this by looking at the request coming from the client. For example, I have a web page. And this web page has lots of content. And there's going to be various pieces. There's going to be images. There's going to be text. There's going to be dynamic content. Maybe, for example, I'm running PHP server. And there could be other pieces on this web page or this website that make up this content. And I want to separate the content onto different servers based on the type of content. For example, I might have a server where I want the images and text to go through. So I'm going to look for anything that has .jpg, JPEG, .gif, GIF or GIF files, or PNG, or .text, star .text, anything with this request. So the client makes a request, get slash something .jpg. I know his image file. I want to send it to a pool of servers that are specific for images and text. Meanwhile, for a PHP server, I want to look for anything that is star wildcard.php and send it to my pool of PHP servers. So in my diagram here, I might have a server that is going to do my images. And I might have another server that's going to do my dynamic content, my PHP. And I might have other servers for other pieces, like for example, multimedia. 
for video streaming or audio streaming or anything else that we want to come up with. And the load balancer will look for these specific strings within the request, within that get request from the client and send it to the different servers. Why is this beneficial? Two reasons. Number one, I can isolate what my servers are doing for that entire application. So the client goes to a single virtual IP and then the load balancer determines, is this an image? Is this dynamic content? Send it to a different pool of servers. So it's easier to manage. The second reason is not all my servers may be created equal or I don't want to create them equal. Images require large database. And this large database requires storage, but it doesn't need much CPU, doesn't need much memory. So it's, I want to build a server that has a lot of disk space, not as much CPU, not much memory, and maybe a lot of uh, network, you know, bandwidth capability. So it can send these images in big files. Meanwhile, my dynamic server, my PHP server, it needs more CPU and memory because it's doing a lot of dynamic processing of the content. It needs to send, do things and respond quickly. So I'm going to build a server that has a lot of CPU and memory, probably not as much storage space. So I can tailor my servers based on the purpose and use this web switching, this content switching to manage the traffic through that virtual IP to the different pools of servers to maximize my resources and maximize the performance and availability for the client. So content switching is all about looking at the specific content and the request from the client, going through a virtual IP, a single virtual IP, to these different pools of servers behind it for different purposes. It can be very cool, again, for persistence reasons, looking at cookies or web switching, looking at content. And you can apply this to lots of other applications as well. It's not just specific to these, these types of protocols, but other protocols can be used as well. So this is a real quick overview on content switching. Hopefully it's useful. Hopefully it gives you some ideas on what you can do for your content on your websites and what your developers can do to help manage this. And you'll learn more. So I appreciate you joining this session for this Lightboard Tech Talk. Please subscribe to the Kemp YouTube channel to find more of our Lightboard Tech Talk sessions and learn a lot more about IT technologies. Thank you very much.